Hello, everybody. I am joined by Sam Grafton, of course, always sporting some of the best attire, I would say, in poker, looking great, feeling great, smiling, enjoying your life. Now, Sam, I want to say at the WSOP, you played 100K. You're playing 100K here. I feel like this is like kind of, it's a big leap for most poker players, but uh -huh. you fit right in. It's no problem. But t talk to me a little bit about, about moving up in stakes like this. Yeah, I, keep, I actually keep it on the wraps that I have on. I try and play it cool, yeah. you know? Like I'm acting like, yeah, this is no big deal. But, but actually it's kind of exciting. You know, it's a, like, a, you know, I remember playing my first 5K, right? You remember, I, I know which was the EPT that was my first EPT. I know what my first 1K was. And, and yeah, that was my first $100,000 tournament in uh, World Series. And then this is, because it's Euro, slightly bigger. So yeah, it's, it, it's exciting, but uh, everyone's very friendly and Obviously, I play with a lot of the guys in other circumstances online or in smaller tournaments. So, you know, beforehand, there's a little bit of nerves. Once you sit down at the table, you know, it's like any other tournament. It's interesting, though, because I would say, you know, the, the leap from maybe a 1K to a 5K is one thing. The leap from like a 25K or a 50K to 100K is pretty, pretty enormous, pretty epic. What, what helps sort of facilitate making that kind of a decision? Yeah, I mean, I've always been, well... I'm ambitious about my poker at the moment, and I think that I can compete at this level. So I'm, you know, if people are willing to like buy some action and, and they have faith in me, that like boosts my own confidence. And, and the fact that like people think I'm good enough to like buy my action in these kind of tournaments, um, you know, I, I take that as a, a great responsibility, but it's also like helps with confidence and helps with sitting down. And as I say, like beforehand, maybe the night before or like strolling in, you feel some nerves, but as soon as the first hand's dealt, it's like, Oh yeah, I know, like this is seven deuce perfect. off, I fold. <laughs> oh, this is ace queen, I raise. It's like, uh, there's no real like difference. Um, you know, you, you, it, they, these guys put you in some tough spots. It is a tough tournament, but uh, it's fun to play as well. Well, of course, we love to see you there. And speaking of high rollers, I was deep diving into your Twitter and you made sort of an interesting point about this like invitation sort of high roller cash gamey slash tournament and sort of that there might be some potential implications some of which are positive, obviously lots of which are also negative. And I wanted you to kind of just ex explain a little, speak to, speak to your tweet. Sure, well, it was just more than anything asking the question because I just felt like it wasn't debated. Obviously, there was a lot of hype around that tournament and for you know good reason, obviously an extraordinary buy-in. People love, I mean, I'm a poker fan. I love to see the best in the world come together to play like super high stakes and, and you know, the Triton stream, you know, by all accounts was absolutely amazing. But I do think like there was kind of room for like, journalists and like top pros to maybe ask some questions about like what does this mean for the direction tournament poker is going in you know uh, the one of the reasons i've always loved tournaments is there is like some level of equality there like anyone can sit down and play there's no politics to it maybe sometimes like even getting the money there is you know like getting uh, backing or or selling action you know a actually some politics does creep in there but in general it's a it's an open field and cash games aren't like that and i wouldn't want us to like tend in that direction and I just thought it was like a little bit odd seeing as poker Twitter lo loves to seize on like any everything yeah exactly and then there was just nothing about this where are you poker drama and I, th I think that's also because like a lot of our like strongest voices in the community were quite incentivized to not perhaps not say anything about this you know or ask any questions about like whether this was a good thing because they were involved and you know their friends and being on the periphery of that I thought at least to ask the question I don't, I don't have any strong like super strong opinions this was certainly like a great event like everyone like poker fans were engaged uh, poker players loved it so I think overall no one could say that this trial event wasn't a huge positive for the community they pulled it off like great but I do think that like in general if this be if, if this begins to repeat, like we need to like stay alert about the situation at least. For sure, and always a conversation. I mean, there's nothing wrong ever yeah, with just having a dialogue. Yeah, exactly. And finally, there was one other tweet which you made, which is more, I think, in the in the realm of the political, but also oh. something I'm all Sam about. Gra Sam the controversy grafting. Like I, I'm forgetting that I about these it. tweets. I love it, but I'm. All, I think we actually, in fact, it was at this event um, a few years ago with um, Olivia Biscay and uh, Daniel Coleman against each other. Both one was like uh, free Palestine trip. I'm pretty sure. sure you remember this. And there was a, a yeah. lot of that was a time where it really uh, st started a conversation about what you can wear at the poker table, what's appropriate to wear, who gets to determine 
determine whether or not you can or cannot wear something, which I do think is another conversation yeah. and, a, and a little bit of a dangerous ground. But what was sort of the inspiration for this one? Well, I guess you can see that the two tweets actually hadn't occurred to me before, like you asking me about them in, in connection, but they are obviously linked. Like I'm a great believer in like personal freedom at the poker table. This is somewhere where people come together from all walks of life with different outlooks, uh, from different poker communities, from different backgrounds, from different countries. And then we need to have a, like a pluralistic approach towards like poker events and the poker table. I really like want to retain that freedom, the freedom to sit down. And then the thing I always loved about this, this job or this hobby is like, no one could tell you what to do, right? You're allowed to be yourself. Like I'm allowed to be loud and wear garish clothes in a way that I wouldn't if I worked in an office or in certain other hobbies. And, and so I guess there can, you know, my outlook is that, that, Poker as a realm of personal freedom needs to be like preserved and protected. And I guess the two tweets are linked in that sense. I love it. I'm totally on board. And in fact, um, we saw Charlie Carroll trying to get into the casino to play the 100K this morning, and they weren't letting him in because he was wearing just a tank top. Not even political. It doesn't even have yeah. to be political. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie Carroll's guns are being censored <laughs> by the... By the poker, by the casino, <laughs> terrible. Fortunately, he could fit into a woman's shirt and did find a line. Was that line your t-shirt he stole? No? <laughs> no, it was some other girl. It's, it's great that he stole a t-shirt, but was still so on brand. I mean, it looked, was. A, I thought he, I was like. Find a Simba shirt. Yeah, it looked great on him. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> well, I always appreciate talking to you. I always appreciate your Twitter. If you guys don't already follow at Squid Poker. Yeah, the IG, SW Grafton, that's where it's at these days. Oh, SW, you got to get on the IG, guys, get it together. All right, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Sam Grafton, I'm Sarah Herring. You guys are with us here on PokerNews.com.